Hi, this is Rob Yates, and this is the video for Homework 1 of Unit 6. Make sure you put your first and last name at the top of your page. And what period did you have math? Let's say period five. All right. First exercise is a young boy was outside playing when he heard a dog whimpering. He found the dog up to its neck in quicksand and it was sinking fast. Without concern for his own safety, the boy threw a rope around the poor creature and he pulled it out. The dog called Red, Sir Ruff of the Royal Palace. The boy returned the dog to the king and queen, who were so happy that they offered the boy a reward. When asked what reward he thought was suitable, the boy replied, I would like one shilling today, sir, and then for the next nine days, I would like to receive triple the amount for the day before. Oh, but a shilling is too little. Sir Ruff is the best dog we have ever had, and you saved him, the queen exclaimed. And the queen paused and then said, How about if I give you 200 shillings per day for 10 days? Where X is the number of days since your reward began. It says, make a table of values comparing the boy's request to the king's offer for a reward. So, let's, let's start with the king's offer. It's kind of easy. We know that he says... Um, it's 200 a day. So it's 200 the first day, as we see, and it's 200 the second day, and 200 the third day, and etc. Now, this of course adds up day after day. Um, this would be 400. This would be 600. 800, a total of 1,000 by day 5, a total of 1,200 by day 6, 1,400, 1,600, 1,800, and he has a grand total of $2,000 by the end of 10 days. But let's look at what the boy requested. He said, hey, I just want a shilling, and I want you to triple it every day. So one shilling becomes... 3. 3 times 3 is 9. 9 times 3 is 27. 27 times 3 is 81. Well, I don't want to fill in all the blanks for you. You've got to do that yourself. However, I'm going to give you a little bit of a hint, and I'm going to tell you that by the 10th day, he receives, just on that day, mind you, 19,683. And so there's a total of $19,683 that he receives on the 10th day. Excuse me, shillings. Um, so let's think about this graph. We have to have 10 days. Um, so let's uh, position it correctly so I can see the whole thing. And maybe I'll write my numbers in a different color. We'll make this day 1. Obviously that's 0. I want to encourage you to be accurate in your graphs. I notice, and it's not just you I'm talking about, it's everybody. We, we kind of want to take it easy at some point. And graphing seems to be the place where a lot of folks decide they want to go ahead and, uh, you know what, uh, put in a minimal effort. And the problem with that is, is usually the graph is where you are displaying what you know and what you have learned. And if your graph is not good, your science or your math teacher is not sure whether to give you full credit for the project involved. I'm going up by thousands. 
on this side because we've got to obviously get up close to 20,000 for day 10. We end up at 20,000 up here. Over here is time in days and your math and your science teacher will both tell you it's important to be precise about your axes. Over here is shillings. Alright, let's do the kings first of all. By day 10 We've got 2,000. He, we'll make him cumulative. Let's make him uh, green. He starts out at zero. And he's got 200 at the first day. And he's got 400 here. He's got 1,000 by the fifth day. So he's all the way up to here. Yeah, so his line's going to look something like that. We'll label that the king, king's offer. All right, let's uh, let's use red for the boy's request. He says, uh, "I want one, and then th three dollars for day two. That hardly shows up here. You know, we've got uh, uh." Nine dollars for day two. At, we got twenty-seven at three. Uh, we've got eighty-one at four. You're going to end up on day ten at about nineteen thousand six hundred eighty-three. Let's just call it right there. It's going to be more of a curve now. On what you turn in, you're going to want to fill in the table here. And you're going to want to fill those numbers in here. Really, in as much as this here is 2,000, right here, where I've made my line, you're probably not going to start seeing dots come above the baseline until 6, 7, 8, right in there. But it's going to be a curve of sorts. And I'm going to do what I don't want you to do, which is I'm going to give you a rough sketch of what it's going to look like. But I want you to actually have numbers here that you plot. So it's going to look when you get done something like this. Having done that, I want you to know that if you just sketch in your graph without plot points from your table, you're not going to get credit for it. I'm sorry. Be accurate in your graphs. All right, so they got some questions for us, like what kind of growth do the boys' request represent? And the answer to that is, it's exponential, right? It grows by a multiplier each time. So you want to go ahead and put in exponential. And I hope you would know that the growth of the king's offer growing at a constant rate day by day plus 200 plus 200 plus 200 is linear and you put that in there if the boy wants the greatest amount of money I know you know the answer to this one because we're all acutely aware when there's money involved it's obviously the boy's offer and the reason you want the boy's offer is it's exponential um, so you put something like the boy's offer You're not supposed to use a comma when you say because, in a sentence. Because it is exponential. And will grow faster and faster. The final question is something for you to project and think about it. It says, in enough time, given enough time, will exponential growth always exceed linear growth? In other words, 
will a growth pattern that instead of adding a constant amount every day, like 200 in our example, but multiplying every day, times 3 for instance, as in our example, will it always exceed the linear amount? What do you think? Did it exceed the linear amount in our particular case? Yes, it did. Will that always be true? Given enough time. You can see over here in our example that by day 4 or 5, it's still below the king's offer. But by day 9 and 10, it was way above the king's offer. So the answer, as you may have guessed already, is yeah, sure, yeah, it will. Exponential growth always exceeds linear growth. So put that in your own words. And as to why, uh, if you have any questions, remember, your teacher is available after school during their office hours. There are math tutors in the library before and after school, some of whom are bilingual, if you're more comfortable in Spanish or another language. Hope you have a great day. We'll see you on the next project.